In chapter 12.3, we'll talk about viral replication, and again, we'll talk a little bit about how we can culture them in the lab. Viral genomes have to get into the cell to uh, do the process of replication. There are two cycles that uh, we describe in uh, viruses. We're going to talk about them in bacteriophages because they're simpler there. Um, we have the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycles. And then we will again talk about culturing. Viral replication requires a certain set of steps. Uh, this is universal. Um, they have to have some sort of host recognition and attachment. So usually this is binding to cell surface uh, receptors. So there's all kinds of proteins on the surfaces of your cells and viruses can bind to and trick those receptors. Once that happens, they have to get the genome inside of the cell. Sometimes that means that the whole virus moves in. Sometimes it's just the genetic material. Once they're inside, they have gene expression. So their viral uh, DNA could get turned into RNA, or if it's an RNA virus, that could be made into a protein right away by translation. They have to express their genes. Those genes are going to direct the assembly of new virions. So they're going to basically hijack the cell and direct it to make new viral particles. Then once those viral particles are made, the virus needs to exit and transmit to a new cell and or new host. This can happen by budding, where it buds off in a little bit of the membrane, or by cell lysis, where it just bursts the cell and releases the viral particles. So we're going to talk about this in uh, terms of bacteriophages. So T4 bacteriophage infects things like E. coli. It has to land on the cell. And when it does, it injects its genome into the cell. And then uh, one of two phases can occur. We have the lytic phase where uh, the virulent phage uh, goes in, replicates, and ruptures the cell. That's the lysis part of the lytic cycle. There's also a phase called lysogeny, uh, where the phage genome can actually integrate into the genome of the host cell. We call this a prophage because it has the capacity to make new phage particles, but it is not happening. In some cases, this can bring genes with it, like the Shiga toxin gene, which we've talked about several times now. Uh, remember the prophage, the, the genome is uh, integrated into the host cell genome, so it can bring other genes with it. That would be an example of transduction. So here's the host cell. It's a bacteria, here's its genome. A phage comes along and lands on the host cell. It can inject its genome in, and then this uh, DNA here can do one of two things. In the simplest phase, it can direct the construction of new phage particles. This is the lytic cycle. And once those phage particles are complete, it will burst the cell and the phage particles will be released. The other stage is the lysogenic cycle, where this piece of DNA can incorporate into the host's genome. It might sit there dormant for long periods of time, so the host cell might replicate itself several times. Usually there are stresses, uh, things like nutrient stress or temperature, things like this, that will reactivate the phage uh, DNA and it will unincorporate from the genome and move out of the lysogenic cycle back into the lytic cycle. So this is for phages, viruses that infect bacteria. We have similar processes that can occur in human cells. There are viruses that can incorporate with your genome. They may stay dormant for long periods of time and stresses may induce their um, resumed expression. A common example are cold sores, which are an example of a herpes simplex virus. Uh, the virus can lay dormant for long periods of time, but periods of stress, this can include uh, mental stress. And we don't always know exactly what the triggers are, but stresses can reactivate the viruses and um, lead to the lytic cycle, which can lead to the outbreak of cold sores. So those are the two phases. Uh, this is for a bacteriophage. 
it is somewhat similar in viruses that infect uh, animals, humans, plants, things like that. If we want to culture viruses, it is more difficult than culturing bacteria. You culture bacteria, you just slap them on a plate and they grow. For viruses, they cannot replicate on their own, so they need cells to grow in. Phages are commonly replicated through what are called plaque assays or plaque cultures. You start with phage particles and a broth of E. coli. You can then mix those two together and the phage will infect the E. coli. You can take uh, an agar and add it to the E. coli phage mixture and pour that on top of an already poured agar plate. So the, the bacteria and the phages, they're all embedded in this agar now. And this bacterial lawn will grow across it and viruses will infect the cells in there and form what are called plaques. These plaques are lysing cells, right? So if we go back to the lytic cycle, as the cells get destroyed, they form these plaques, and that's caused by the viral replication. So a culturing bacteriophages, not super difficult, but still an extra step in doing this. If you wanna culture something like a human virus, uh, it's a little more tricky. So human cells do not like to grow outside of the human body, and when they do grow, they have very strict uh, regulation on when they can grow and divide. So your human cells, if you took them out and put them into a nutrient medium, they could grow and divide for several replications. But after, I don't know, about 20 or so, maybe a few more, they would stop growing and dividing because there are uh, checks in our genome that say, okay, you've divided too many times, you might have mutations that could lead to cancer. Cancer cells, on the other hand, have mutations that often get around these checks. So cancer cells can be what we called immortalized, which means that they will grow indefinitely and reproduce indefinitely. So many of our cell cultures are based on cancer cells. In fact, our most famous cell line are HeLa cells. These are very famous because they were taken from a woman named Henrietta Lacks from her cancer. And it was done at a time in the, um, I think it was the 50s or the 60s, when we didn't have good uh, ethical practices on informed consent. So she wasn't really told that her cells would continue to be used for uh, over 70 years now. And uh, yes, they have saved lives. Using this cell line is incredibly important, but it's also important to make sure that we inform people of what they're donating their tissues for. Um, it, there's very interesting uh, books on this topic. Um, the Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks is one. Um, you can read all about it if you're really interested in that. It's a really interesting uh, kind of conundrum in medicine. So we could get a cell culture, right? Um, and this is another problem. Certain viruses only infect certain cell types. So uh, maybe these are skin cells and this is uh, a virus that infects skin cells. So these cells will grow and uh, we allow the virus to attach and it basically forms the same thing, a plaque. They, they uh, invade, reproduce and destroy the cells. Um, so we can replicate the viruses this way. And here's a plaque assay. So all the dark purple are human cells and the clear areas are plaques where the virus has replicated in there. So working with viruses is more difficult than working with bacteria. This makes studying them incredibly difficult. Uh, bacteria, easy to grow in most cases. Viruses, much more difficult to grow. That's why it takes so long to develop therapies to specific viruses. Okay, so that was a short one. Uh, we have virions, they attach to the host cell surface receptors. This allows them to get into the cell. They can either do the lytic cycle, which will lyse the host cell, um, or they can go through lysogeny. They maintain their genome in the host uh, and will wait to reactivate until uh, stressors come along and then they go back into the lytic. You can culture viruses by using these plaque assays where you make a lawn of cells. Um, animal viruses have to be grown in animal tissue. Um, same thing with plants, they have to be grown in uh, plant viruses in plant tissue. All right, that's it for 12.3.